Yes, me. Are you surprised to see me here, Jimin Young? Hyun Bin, what are you doing here? And why did you tie me here like this? You are really so innocent, Jimin. I am sort of really blind to see you in this way. What do you mean? Hyun Bin chuckled while smoking. My stupid Hyun. He kidnapped you because he thought you killed him. And guess what? That was me. Okay. What? He looked at Hyun Bin because he couldn't believe what he just heard. I gave him the proof that he killed him, and he believed that. He laughed like a man. But but why? He, he was your brother. Then then why you killed him? Then why why me? Because Hyun loved me for a long time. That's why I targeted. I wanted him to hurt me because I knew. After hurting you, you get hurt, and he did the same. I wanted him to kill you, but he couldn't. He didn't kill you, and today he set you free. I was so disappointed, really so disappointed. How can he leave you? Why didn't he kill you? He looked at Jimmy, who was already looking at him in disbelief. Oh, now I remember. He loved you. That's why, right, right? But guess what? I won't leave you. I'll set you free from an injury, from this world. He pointed his gun at Jimin. Then Jimin chuckled. And do you think he will leave? You cannot even touch me. So much confidence, huh? It will never gonna happen. After killing you, I'll kill him too. Then kill me if you can. But seems like you're desperate today. Then let me fulfill your wish. He pointed his gun towards Simi when they heard a gunshot from outside. A guard came running there and said, "Boss, your 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 brother brother came here before he could say further. He collapsed on the floor and his blood spread there." Jimin chuckled when Hyunbin was looking so scared. He pointed his gun on Jimin's head. "Are you scared, Hyunbin? Thinking how he came to our world? He is your brother, but a mafia." Mafia killed Shivam. Don't you? You can tell him. Don't you wanna know how he came to know about your trip? Then let me tell you. No, it's never gonna happen. Try to understand me. Believe me, nothing will happen to him. Still, I cannot risk his life for you. But this will work, Mary. I'm sure about it. Did you forget what he did? And you think to put him in this place? No, I can't. That's it. Don't you trust me? I do, but not in this matter. We have no other way. It is just not this. At least listen to me. No means no. Jimin will never gonna do it. I'm ready. Hobi and Yoongi both looked at the direction and saw Jimin standing there. We all know the truth. Hobi Yoongi is right. If he knows that he set me free, he'll surely do something. Are you crazy, Jimin? He tried to kill my son. You can do this to me. I can't risk your life. But this is the only way to get him out of his way. And Hobi Youngi is saying nothing will happen. Means nothing will happen. Yes, Youngi, believe me, nothing will happen to you. Fine, but you dare to do something daring. He glared at Jimin, who hugged him tightly, seeing them Hobi feet cut when they parted. But I still can't understand how did you find that Hyunbin is behind this one? He asked Hyunbin when he told him. The day when Jimin told me that he didn't kill Thayun, I showed him the picture which Yangsu collected. The figure was his like Jimin. But then I came to know that it's not Jimin. I noticed that Jimin's hands are short and chubby, but those hands were large, and I was feeling like I saw them somewhere. In between, he looked at Jimin, who was looking at him with a dumb face. What? Are you making fun of my hand? No, you are short and weak, but I love you the way you are. Hobi again interrupted them in their flirting. Then, then how did we find out about him? One day, when I entered inside my room, I saw Jimin standing in front of my wardrobe, but it wasn't him. It was Jimin. I was surprised because his back was just looking like Jimmy, and that day he came to steal our villa key. I was wondering why he wanted that. Then I started stalking him. 
his call details, his passport, phone locations during time of accident, everything I collected. Then I came to know that he was in Seoul the day of time's accident. Then why you didn't tell me before? Did you tell me? What? You already knew about it. What? You? You already knew? Yes, I knew. And then why you didn't you tell him? Do you think it was easy? Hyunbin is his brother. Could he trust me? I tried to collect the evidences, but got failed every time. At least he should have told me. He is right. It wasn't easy for him. I still can't believe Hyunbin did this all. Would you believe if you would have not found about him by yourself? I guess no. I'm sorry. What if you don't all these things without trusting me? That's not all you fault for me. You may be doing it. What did you call me? Huh? Say that again. Young? Oh god, you do. You can flirt later. Now focus on the word. Jimin will put the tracker inside your buttons to track you. As soon as Yunbin will come to know that Yung is not going to kill you, he'll surely do something. Okay, Young. You sure this will work? Of course. Jimin smirked and said, Probably I'm innocent young being, but I'm not stupid. You, I'll kill you. He pressed the trigger and boom. A loud scream in voice when Yun Bin looked at his gun which fell on the ground. It is a cushion. Then he looked around and in an instant his all bodyguards fell on the ground when he saw Yun Bin and Hobi Kim there running with their gun. Yun Bin fell on the ground and tried to run. Then Yun Bin walked towards him. Hobi went towards Simon and untied him. They looked at Yungi, who held Hyunbin's arm and made him sit on the chair. He was looking so calm, but they could feel his anger in his eyes. Why? Why you did that, huh? He asked Hyunbin with his deep, scary voice. I asked why on the earth you did that? Hyunbin flinched because of Yungi's shout. Tell me why? Because I was jealous. I was jealous of Hyun. You always loved him, more than me. You got everything, your love, your care, everything he got. But what I got? Nothing. Nothing. Didn't Namdu love you more than Thayum? Didn't he? He supported you. He took care of you whenever you felt it. He was there for you every time. Did you forget that? I didn't. But he got everything. I also wanted to become an idol. But they chose him. They chose him instead of me. Tell me why. Was I was? And then I saw Jungkook. I fell for him. But but he also loved him. Why not me? I was jealous. I wanted to give you everything. Then I planned to destroy him. And I came to know that Jimin planned a date for them. I killed him. I killed him. Then why Jimin, huh? Because because you loved him. I wanted you to kill him by your hands so that you can regret for your whole life. I wanted you to regret it. Your plan was nice on him. But your greed and jealousy ruined him. He tried to kill Thayong, who loved you by his all heart. But guess what? You failed to kill him. They all looked at the voice direction when Hyunbin got more shocked to see the person in front of him. This much later towards him. Thayong? Then he looked behind where everyone was standing there including Namjoon, Jin, Jungkook and Bani. Thayong walked towards Yungin with his steady eyes when Yungi stopped him. He is not your husband, Thayong. Did you forget what he did to me? How? How, how can I forget? He removed Yungi's hand from his arm and stepped towards Yungin. Why, Yungin? Didn't I love you? Don't you wanna know how I'm still alive when you yourself showed me with your own hands? How, how can you? I am chuckled sadly and said, <laughs> That night, when I was going towards the restaurant in my car, I got a call from Hobi Hoon that my life is in danger. And then my driver stopped the car all of a sudden on a hill. I didn't expect you there. You showed me and pushed me from the hill. But fortunately, Hobi Hoon came there and saved me. I didn't know that I was in coma for almost six months. When I came out of coma, Obi told me everything. 
I still can't believe London. You were this much jealous that you even even saw I loved you as you. Look at Namjoon Wong. He raised you, loved you more than me, and you did this. Yangjin looked at Namjoon, who had tears in his eyes. He was hurt the most because he always supported me more than he supported him. I think I'm the favorite Yangjin. I failed to raise him. It's not his fault, but mine. Yungi didn't say anything but pointed his gun on Yungjin's head. Yungjin and everyone present there were so shocked as they didn't expect Yungi to do something like this. Namjin slowly walked towards Yungi and said, Young, please, please don't do this. I, I know he did wrong, but, but he's our brother. Don't point your gun at him. And who said I'm pointing my gun on my own brother? He smirked and looked at Yungin, who was looking hella scared. You were right, Namjoon. Our Yungin can never do such things. But someone look-alike him can do. He said while looking at Yungin, when everyone was so confused. Right, Yungin? Now tell everyone who you are. I, I, I'm Yungin. What are you talking about? You are not Yungin. Better accept it. What do you mean, Yangji? He means he is not what he looks like. They all heard a voice from behind and looked back when they all were so sure. A person just looking like Yangji was standing in front of them. He couldn't understand what was going on. Uh, who are you? I'm Yangji Yong. You're Yangji. If if you're Yangji, then then who is the person sitting on the chair? He is Yangji. Right, Yanjin? How, 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 how do you know? How, how did you find him? Do you think you can fool me in disguise of my brother? You literally fooled us for more than two years, Yanjin. You tortured my brother for two years. Yungi, what's actually happening here? And who is Yanjin? And who is real Yanjin? And who is the real culprit? Le Yanjin is the real culprit. Do you remember, Hobi? Before three years, we went on a mission against the gangsters who used to sell drugs, girls and children. The one of them was his boyfriend and one was his brother. What? So, now tell me, Yanjin, do you want to go to them in hell? Your boyfriend and brother will be waiting for you there. How, how, how can you find about it? Your plan was nice. First, you kidnapped my brother and disguise yourself as him. But you forgot, you can disguise as him, but your soul can never change. He, he, he kidnapped our Hyunjin? For two years young, I was there in that underground place. I was waiting for anyone to come and save me. And finally, Hyun came. He saved me. Namjoon didn't say anything and embraced Hyunjin in his arms. I miss your hug, Hyun. I craved for your hunt for two years. I'm sorry, Yuna. I'm sorry. You're not safe. You will never let you go anywhere. Then he broke the hug and asked Yungi. How and when you find out about his young? Then you came to know that he is not our Yungin. One day when I saw Yungin in my room, I saw he had keys of this villa in his hand. I was suspicious about that. And when I asked him, he said he wanted to visit this villa, but only I knew how much Hyunjin hated this villa. Yes, I still hate this house because this is connected to our parents' death. Then how did you find that he is not Hyunjin? I started collecting every single information and then I checked his passport. And you know what I found Hyunjin? He said while looking at Hyunjin. I found the date when Hyunbin landed in Korea two years ago. That was so shocking because Hyunbin landed here two days before his birthday. But he came to meet me after five days of his birthday. Then I checked those pictures in which Jimin was pointing the gun at Hyun. I knew Hyunbin is not left-handed and he always hated all these things. He even hated to visit my mansion. And all of a sudden he started coming there. Then I found your real identity. Everyone there was stunned to hear the truth. Then Hobi said, Then why didn't tell us? And 
how can he look just alike yonder? The dental plastic surgery. And about the tooth, I wanted to show you. I'm really thankful to the woman because of her having this alive. But no one knew the reality. I'm really sorry, Yandi. It's not your fault, Yandi. You did right. Because of you, Hyung Jung is still alive. And I'm glad I could see you all again. Yun Jun, I just wanna thank you because you didn't kill my brother. But don't expect the same from me. You almost killed my brother and then tried to kill Jenny. I'll make sure you did regret for your whole life. He said and signaled his guard to beat Yun Jun away. Some guards came there, tied him up with the chain and left from there. Yun Jun hugged Yun Jun and then parted. Here Thayong Yun is waiting for your hug. Go. As he said, Yun Bin ran towards Thayong and hugged him tightly. Then Thayong too hugged him while shedding tears. I, I am sorry. I, I doubted on you. I am really sorry. It wasn't your fault, Yun. I am, I am not mad at you. I miss you so much. I love you, Yun. I love you too, my little Bin. Yun Bin left from there outside when Jimin followed him behind. Yung Yi was going to sit in his car, then Jimin held his hand to stop him. Where are you going? Yung Yi didn't say anything as he was hurt, because he hurted Jimin so badly. He was not in a condition to explain anything. Your hand is bleeding. Let me treat it. You don't need to. I deserve it. You don't. You don't deserve it. I. I want to treat it. I want to be your healer for whole life. Yungi looked at Jimin with his beady eyes and Jimin too had tears in his eyes. He was carefully looking at Yungi's hand when Yungi felt some tear drops on his hand. Don't hurt yourself like this. It hurts you. It really hurts. Yungi was not able to utter anything as he knew he hurt Jimin a lot but still Jimin cares about him. So you guys must be thinking, when time came there, why no one was surprised except Yun Jun? How and when they came to know that time was alive? So let me bring you back to the day when they all came to know. I wanted to take you somewhere. Where? Yes. To my house. Come on, let's go to Are you sure you want to take me there? Hmm. Okay then, let's go. He said and Yung Yi took Jimin down off the table and went to wipe their hands. Hobi smiled brightly and they left towards Hobi's home. As they entered, Jimin saw so much security inside the home. He was surprised to see this much security because even Yung Yi doesn't have these much guards in his own house. Hobi rang the bell when someone opened the door. Jimin was too surprised to see the person in front of him and said, Why? Is it you? Jimin! She was also surprised and happy to see Jimin there as she didn't know that he was also coming there. She smiled and they both hugged. What are you doing here in Hobi Young's house? How are you? I missed you so much. I missed you too, Jimin. Are you okay now? They were hugging each other when Young interrupted them. Can you please leave my Jimin now? They pulled out of the hug when Ryan checked and I think he's possessing me. Why are you so jealous, Yungi? They are friends. Being Ryan's poor friend, I am not jealous. Then why you are? What? You both are in a relationship? Really, Ryan? You are going to get more surprises today. Come inside. He entered inside and headed towards our area. Jimmy saw three similar figures sitting there. He instantly recognized them. Junko? Jinwon? Nanjunho? They three looked back at Jimin and they two were surprised to meet him. Jimin ran towards them and hugged both of them. Poopy, I miss you so much. Jimin, it's it's you. How are you? Are you okay? Where were you? I was I was so much worried. I'm good, Poopy. How are you and Amma Pa? Are they fine? We all were worried about you. Where were you? They parted away and then Jimin hugged Jin and Namjoon. After meeting each other, they all sat on the couch when Namjoon said, I'm really relieved to see you, Jimin. Hobi, thank you so much. But where was Jimin and how did you find him? As he said, Yungi and Hobi looked at each other. Then Yungi told them everything. He was taken to help you for all the things. They were really shocked to hear everything, but Yungi told them. 
to Mr. Mafia. How can you do such things to an innocent person? And without even knowing the truth, do you think you did great? So, shut up, Brennan. Don't even try to say anything and don't need to be in his favor. Young Kiyan, how can you be so immature? Young Kiyan, how can you be so cruel towards a person you really love? I'm really disappointed. Young Kiyan didn't say anything. He was just sitting down all the time. Then Jimin held his hand and said, Why you are not blaming me like that? I know he did wrong, but just tell me, if you would have been in his place, would you let go that person who killed Kyle? Wasn't that an accident? Namjoon was about to say something, but he heard someone's voice from behind. Hobia, I did the check. He was about to say further, but stopped when he looked them all sitting there. Hobi looked at him and said, Oh, Jiwon, come here. He said when Jiwon came there and there. Guys, here's my friend Lee Jiwon, a brain surgeon. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. Mm, well, Hobi, I did all the checkups. He is all fine now. I think I should leave now. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee. It's my duty, Mr. Lee. Now I'm taking my leave. Take care. He left from there when you know. Hobi, about who was talking? Who is fine? I guess it's the right time to tell you guys. What do you want to tell, Hobi? Come with me. They all followed him behind when Hobi took them in an underground place. After walking for a while, he stopped in front of a room and scanned his finger. Then the door opened and they entered inside a big room. You all came at the same time? They heard a familiar voice and they all turned when Pao Thai was standing there. Everyone except Yungi, Hobi and Wan was so surprised to see Thai. They couldn't believe on their eyes. Happiness, surprise, relief and a different type of feeling they were having at that time. Jimmy slowly walked towards Thailand and said, Am I dreaming? It's... it's me, Thailand? Is it really me? Yes, it's me, Jim. You're Thai. He said when Jimmy immediately hugged him tightly, burst in love. Where were you? Why didn't you come to me? Why you left me? It's it's really you. My dear, it's you. Do you know how much I missed you? Jimin pulled out of the hug and started kissing on Thayun's face. Everyone there was looking at Jimin while smiling with tears in their eyes. Then Jimin again hugged Thayun tightly while crying like a little kid. Jimin, let me breathe at least. You are hugging me really tightly. Do you want to kill me by just hugging this much tight? He said when Jimin pulled out of the hug and gave a slight kiss on his forehead. Now let me meet everyone. Then he met Samjung and Jin, who hugged him softly. They all were happy to see him alive. Then Thayun looked at Jungkook, who was standing there silently. His eyes were numb and he was admiring Thayun. Thayun slowly walked towards Jungkook and smiled with so many emotions in his eyes. Why are you standing like this? Weren't you gonna ask anything? I... I... He wanted to say so many things, but he felt like his throat got choked with so many emotions. He was not able to utter anything. Then Thayong hugged him, then he too hugged him more. He was feeling like he got everything at that moment. His lifeless life has come to life again. He kissed on Thayong's head. After a long time, he felt like his heart is beating again. I thought I lost you. I thought you're never gonna come back. Why did you leave me? You don't even know how much I cried. How much pain I felt. Please don't leave me alone. Never ever. Is it a way to propose for me? Jungle smiled in tears and parted away from her. He got tired face and kissed on his forehead. Tell me how you want me to propose you. Um a beautiful place with a beautiful ring and flowers. Hearing Thayong's word, everyone chuckled. Wish is granted my princess, but I didn't get anything. If Thayong was alive then, why didn't he tell us, Hongi? We are brothers. You should have told us. Yes, Yongi. How can you be so mean? It was me who asked him to not tell anyone. But why, Hong? Because my life was in danger. 
Then Thayam told him everything, how he had been tried to kill him and how Hobi saved him and kept it a secret. Only Yungi and Hobi knew that Thayam was alive. Do you know what are you saying Thayam? Yonbin can never do such things. You must have seen someone else. He is your brother. He is right now. Jim. What? Yungi, you know whom are you blaming? And if you did that, then why you didn't tell anyone? I just came to know about it some days ago. It was hard to believe, but Thayam himself told us everything. He was the one who tried to kill him, the one who led the information of Jimin being kidnapped, the one who attacked on Hobi, and the one who tried to harm Jimin. But why? I don't know. Everything changed in these four months. The news of Thayam being alive spread all over the media. Jimin and Thayam again debuted together as a group. Because they wanted to continue their journey together as long as they could. All the fans became so happy. Media wanted to know where Thayam was. But because they didn't want to just hurt the truth, they stated that Thayam's enemy attacked on him. But because of his security reasons, they didn't tell anyone that he is alive. Everything was going good. Everyone was happy. For some days, Thayam lived with Yungi as he wanted to take care of him. But after some days, he moved in Jimin's house as Jimin wanted him to stay with him. In that meantime, Jungkook supports Thayam when he gladly accepted his proposal. Their families were happy as their happiness, Jimin and Thayam were now there with them. On the other side, Hobi and Wan got engaged and Mr. Jung was really happy to see them together. Everything was going well, but what about Jungkook? Well, after the incident, Yungi really apologized from everyone for what he did. Yungi and Jimin both didn't talk to each other, though they were trying to see each other, but some things were holding them back. The things which happened were really terrifying for them. It wasn't easy for them to accept it. In these four months, they encountered with each other a lot of time because of time or some other reasons. But they both ignored each other. Though they wanted to hold each other tightly, they wanted to talk, they wanted to tell each other that they are really missing each other. They are craving for each other's touch. But still, they were holding their thoughts back. Jimin is sitting on his bed while writing something when Thayan came inside his room. Jimin looked at him and gave his eyes smiling. Thayan too sat on his bed beside him and asked, What are you doing, Jim? Mm, just writing somewhere. Are you feeling better now? He asked while closing his notebook. It's been more than four months and I'm fully recovered now. Still, I hope Sensei is not being too naughty with you. He is taking good care of me. Hmm, I'll kill him if he hurt you even a bit. He giggled, but then his smile fell instantly as he remembered Yungi. Time to notice that. Um, uh, I created the music. Will you listen and tell me how is it? He said to avoid Yungi's heart. Time noted when Jimin opened his laptop and played the music. After listening to music, Time complimented him when he did it. I know you like it. So, what are you gonna do now? I'll come for I'm asking about you and Yungi Yung. He said interrupting him in between. What about us? He said while avoiding eye contact. You both love each other, then why don't you get together? It doesn't matter time. I know we love each other, but our situations are I just it's it's so complicated time. I know Yungi is wrong, but he loves you. I'm not blaming him time. I know it was a misunderstanding and he didn't do anything intentionally. But still, I just don't want to talk about that. You both are hurting yourself. I know Jung is feeling guilty with him. He also wants you, but that's what I'm saying. It's complicated. Better just not talk about that. Hyung was standing in the balcony while thinking about something so deeply. He flinched all of a sudden when he felt a pair of lips on his neck. What my baby is thinking so deeply that he didn't even notice me? He wrapped his arms around Thayam's chest from behind when Thayam said, thinking about Jimin and Yungi Yung. He said and faced Jungkook. They both are suffering cooking. They both love each other. Don't you think we should do something for them? Hmm, you're right. I have an idea. Which idea? 
why don't you take Jimin with you in Yong's house for some days? Haim's eyes lit up in excitement and he asked Jagrup, Oh no, it's really a great idea. On the first text, they will come close to each other. Hmm. But will Jimin be ready to go with me there? That's my responsibility to convince him. Don't worry. You'll have to go there. But why they go? Listen, Yong, it's just a project, and for project purpose, you'll have to go there. What's wrong with you? I will also be there with you. Still, I don't want to go there. Don't behave like a child, Yong. I don't want to listen anything. You'll go there, and that's final. But why in Yongi's house? You can stay in hotel. I don't want to risk anything. You'll go there and live in his house until your project is done. Fine. Good. Now pack your stuff. You'll live tomorrow. He said and left when Jimin threw his body on his bed. All he could think about is Min Yongi. He still doesn't know how he will face him. Next day, Jimin and Thayong reached Daewoo on the airport and left towards Yongi's mansion. The car stopped and they came out of the car. Thayong yawned and saw everyone was there to welcome them. Jimin was nervous as hell. Though he didn't come here first time, but it was all different now. He sighed and they entered inside the house. Mrs. Seo was standing there with her beautiful smile. She came near them and hugged Thayong when Thayong hugged her back. I missed you, my son. I missed you too, Ajama. They parted when Mrs. Seo looked at Jimin and hugged him. I'm here again, Ajama. I thought you're never gonna come back here. I'm glad you came. Then they both sat on the couch when Jinin's eyes were finding Yungi only. He desperately wanted to see him. Hyung observed and called Yungi. Where are you, Yung? In my room. You didn't even come to see me. I was sleeping. Did you come? Is this the time to sleep, Yung? Come down, stay fast. Mm, coming. They cut the call and Yungi came downstairs with his messy hair being all sticky. He didn't notice that Jimin was also there. He came towards him, then his eyes fell on Jimin. He halted on his place when they both had an eye contact. They both posed like statues. Jimin? He whispered Jimin's name when they both broke the eye contact. <laughs> you are looking like a lazy cat. He giggled and hugged Jimin. I... Why you didn't tell me that Jimin was also coming? It's a project, Yong. Jimin and I are supposed to do it together. It's obvious for us to come here together. Oh, I see. You, you two enjoy. I'm leaving. He was about to leave when Thayong stopped him. Want to meet Jimin? Why you are awaiting him? It, it's not like this. I, I just have to do some urgent work. Excuse me. In an instant, Yong disappeared from there. Hyung sighed and looked at Jimin, who was staring at the table blankly with his numb eyes. His eyes were reflecting his emotions, but he was holding them somehow. He felt a relief seeing Yungi after a long time, but he felt bad when Yungi left without even saying anything. Jimin and Hyung are working on their projects here in Delhi. They met some music producers there. Jungkook and their team are helping them from soon. They shoot their videos for their upcoming collapse, though they are busy because of the schedule, but still at night they spend time together. Yungi sometimes admire them, but he feels quite nervous and awkward in front of Jimin. Whenever they look at each other, they become nervous. That's why most of the time they ignore each other's presence. Yungi point of view I was going through the hall when I found Jimin sitting while kneeling down in the kitchen. What's he doing? I stepped towards him and called his name. Jimin? Jimin flinched all of a sudden and groaned a little. What happened? Then my gaze shifted towards Jimin's hand. It was bleeding. I widened my eyes and held Jimin's hand. What were you doing? I was picking up the pieces of glass. It fell from my hand and broke. There are a lot of servants to do it. See, you got hurt. It's fine. It will Come, let me treat it. He held Jimin's hands and led him towards the couch. He made Jimin sit on the couch and came with the first aid box. He sat in front of Jimin, kneeling down and took his cute little hands in his big one. Jimin stalled by his actions. He tried to back away but he held his arms to make him stay there. Let me do it. 
He sat and started tracking Jimin's sound. Jimin was totally lost in his thoughts while staring at Yungi, that he didn't even notice that Yungi had done tracking his mind. Yungi looked at Jimin and found him staring at him. Don't get yourself into any trouble. I'm leaving. He was about to leave but stopped because of Jimin's words. Won't you come to save me? Do you think this beast can save someone? Weren't you the one who used to stop me every day to protect me? Hobie Hyun already told me everything. And the thing you just did showed everything that you're not a beast. Without answering, Yoongi left from there, leaving Jimin alone. Yoongi woke up and went downstairs to grab some water. He was going towards the kitchen when he sees the telephone. He somehow managed to grab him. He saw that there was water spilled on the floor. He ignored it and went inside the kitchen. He saw Jimin was already there. They both looked at each other when Jimin walked out from there ignoring him. But Yungi widened his eyes when he realized that there was water on the floor and Jimin went in that direction. He immediately ran outside of the kitchen and yelled out Jimin's name. Jimin carefully, he said while grabbing Jimin's hand and pulled him to his side. Because of a sudden pull, Jimin lost his balance and they both landed on the floor. Jimin fell on top of Yungi when their lips were just inch away. They both looked into each other's eyes deeply. Both could hear each other's heartbeat, which was skipping their beats. Yungi's gaze automatically shifted towards Jimin's lips and he again looked in his eyes. They both wanted it, but all of a sudden they heard a loud vibration and looked up only to see Tayan, who nervously looked at them and turned his phone silent. Jimin immediately got up when Yungi also stood up. I didn't mean to interrupt. He scratched his back of the head and ran from there, and Jimin also ran from there. Hayoung went towards the backyard and picked up the call. Kukia, why did you call? He said annoyingly. Wait, are you busy? But you said that you'll be free today. Ah, I said, but you called at the wrong time. All my plan fell apart because of you. Which plan? Jimin was in the kitchen when I saw Young coming down. I spilled water on the floor. And when Jimin came out, Young pulled Jimin towards him and they fell on the floor. You know, they were about to kiss. Then what? Then Young called Jimin their moment. He said and pouted. I am sorry. But how would I know that these things were happening there? Ah, it's okay. Did you sleep then? Hmm, I'm missing you into my arms. I'm missing you too, but don't worry, we'll come soon. Then I want all your hugs and kisses. Time chuckled and said, <laughs> My all hugs and kisses are yours, Mrs. Young. I'm all yours. Hmm, I know. We'll meet soon, Jagia. Sarangyo, not Sarangyo. He cut the call while smiling widely. He turned and smiled when he saw Yungi was standing there looking at him while crossing his arms on his chest. Yung, when did you come here? Since we are talking. Did, did, did you hear everything? Hmm. Actually, I stopped just... doing these things. He deserves someone better and I am not comparable to be with him. Would you like if you will be in someone other's arms? What the hell are you talking? His voice changed all of a sudden. Isn't it what you mean? If you will not treasure him, someone other will. See, you yourself are jealous only by hearing you. But if it actually happens, can you see him in someone other's hand? Now, choice is what him. He said and left from there while smiling internally because he knows what type of person he is young with. It's almost midnight when Jimin is trying to sleep, but he can. He is turning and twisting, and then he sits up on the bed and grabs his hair for sleeping. Why all the time he is inside my house? Why can't I think anything else except him? Then he got up off the bed and sat upstairs on the rooftop to freshen up his mood. Then he saw Yungi was already standing there with a cigarette in his hand. He took a puff of it and threw the rest on the ground. Jimin was about to go but stopped when Yoongi said, Didn't you sleep yet? Jimin stopped and looked back at him 
where he was sent back to the home. Jimmy walked towards him and sang at the place his friends beside him. How did you know it was me without even looking back? I know you. Why didn't I sleep? I was feeling like Tracy. He said when an awkward silence spread in between them. Then Jimmy broke the silence by asking, Why do you think it's a bad addiction? Addictions are always bad. Not all the addictions are the same. Some are quite beautiful and pleasant. I never heard about an addiction like this. But I did. Jimmy faced Yoongi and came closer to him. In an instant, he took Yoongi's lips and backed away. Yoongi was still wondered by Jimmy's action. I'm sleepy now. Good night. He said and turned to go when Yoongi said, Don't let me get addicted to these things. It will not be good for you. These are better than other cycles. And I can get addicted to these things. For my whole life, only if you do. He said and left from the way. Yungi pointed to me. I was lying on my back, having the tough time to think. I stood up and came in the balcony. It's quite peaceful here, but my mind is all puzzled. All I can think about is this thing. His thoughts didn't leave me for even one second. I don't actually know what should I do. At some point, I don't want to leave him, but what I did really makes me think that I don't deserve his love. And then all of a sudden, I felt two arms around my stomach. Is it really you or I am hallucinating you? It really feels so real. And then I felt his heart beat on my back when he closed the distance between us, snuggling more into me and rest his head on my back. Jimin, I whispered his name when he said, Can we be like this for some time? I really miss you. After a few seconds of silence, Jimin again said, Didn't you miss me? I... I did. Then, let me be with you forever. I want you. Only you. You deserve better, Jimin. I am not worthy to have your love. He said when Jimin dropped a hug and faced Yungi. He cupped his face in his hands and looked straight in his eyes. Only you and you deserve my love. I do not remember what happened. I, I just want you. Only you. My body, my soul, everything belongs to you. But if you really want to let me go, then I'll go and never ever come back to you. But I love you forever. He said and backed off a little. Then Yungi instantly pulled him towards him, grasping his face. Are you sure you won't regret being with me? Never. As Jimmy said, Yungi pulled him into a deep place. They were experiencing a mixed feeling of love. It's like their own suffering and pain vanished in just a second. Jimmy started hurting Yungi's head like he wants to eat them. Yungi smiled in between the cake to give Jimmy's separation. He moved his hand down to Jimmy's hip when Jimmy jumped and wrapped his legs around Yungi's feet. Yungi entered his tongue inside Jimmy's mouth to taste every inch of his mouth. Jimmy was desperately kissing him, trying to run back, but Yungi was making it hard for him to do so. After a good 10 minutes of talking, he pulled out his hand. Then Yungi made Jimmy stand on the floor. Seems like you are more desperate to have my love. I am. I want all your love. Yungi chuckled slowly while showing his gunny smile. <laughs> it's all yours. He said and kissed on Jimmy's forehead when Jimmy smiled shyly. While sucking my lips, you were desperate, but now you were shy over a forehead kiss. It's because forehead kisses feel different. Does it? When Jimmy stood on his toes and kissed on Yungi's forehead, then Yungi blinked his eyes multiple times as he didn't expect this feeling. He touched his forehead with his hand and looked at Jimmy who gave his beautiful eyes one. This is how it feels. He said and came inside the room. Yungi also came behind him. Jimmy stopped there and looked at the floor where he used to sleep. 
and my students dreams. Yungi immediately hugged Jimmy from behind, snuggling his nose in his neck. I'm sorry for all those things. Just call me like a friend. Let's forget what happened and focus on our present. I will call you like a friend, no matter what comes up. Jimmy smiled and said, I want to sleep. Can I sleep with you? Yungi backed off on the rock and picked Jimmy now in his arms and walked towards his bed. He laid Jimmy down on the mattress softly and threw him beside him. He pulled him in his embrace and Jimmy lifted his head on his chest. They both clasped his phone in each other's hands. Yungi pointed to him. I opened my eyes when I found Jimmy lying only like a baby. His face really looked pretty and stubby. I still can't understand why I should be doing so badly. And this too big. So well seen. But now I'm trusting him. He is mine and I belong to him. Yungi hugged Jimmy more tightly when Jimmy snuggled more into him. Yungi smiled wildly and kissed on Jimmy's forehead. Then he remembered Jimmy's forehead too. He never expected someone to do such things. Yungi closed his eyes again, feeling Jimmy's heart in, which was giving him pain. What do you mean he is not in his own time? I don't know where he sleeps in this room, but, but he isn't here. Well, I, I think we should ask him. Then let's go. They both came out of the room and ran towards Yungi's room. Tayo opened the door with a loud thud when both Jungkook and Tayo got close, seeing the scene in front of them. Yungi and Jimmy were sleeping while cuddling with each other. Tai and Jungkook both looked at each other and Tai shouted, How can you sleep so peacefully while making us worried like hell? As he shouted, Jimmy stood up in Jimmy and Jimmy fell on the floor with a loud thud. They both looked here and there and found Tai and Jungkook standing there. Hi, Cookie, what are you doing here? But when did you come here in Delhi? I just came an hour ago. What the hell on this earth happening here? He asked with his pretty voice and adjusted his eyes to look at Tai and Jungkook. Little bad, why did you talk that loud? He said and I just lay down in the bed and Tai and Jung to him and rolled over his body. Yo, wake up now, it's already done. We will leave the day, did you forget? Then Yungi woke up and the two left from there. Jimmy got ready and came downstairs when found Ayan and Jungle talking to each other while sitting in the car. When will they go? Oh, we will go, not you. Huh? What will you do? I bought your clothes and I got stuck. There is a good place. He pointed at a good place when Jimmy looked at the front of the tree. Is there still any good to do? You are very dumb thing. Would you want to stay here with me? Huh? I, you both were sleeping together and you sold your problem, right? How finally planned this? Which plan? Plan to make you and him closer so that you can solve your problem. That means? Hmm. We planned this because we knew if we both will see each other more, you will surely come. So now everything is better and this is better. So we can leave you. You guys are very so weird. He said while eating an apple, at least thank us, in your dreams, don't be here like him. He rolled his eyes and Jimmy ran towards him and wrapped his arms around Tyrone's head. Tyrone, thank you so much. He dramatically kissed on Tyrone's head and started giggling. They all came out fine and stood before getting in the car. Then Jungkook said, it's time to leave, let's go baby. Hmm. Yungi, I miss you. He sat while hugging Yungi when Yungi patted his hand. I miss you too, dear. Okay, Yungi, take care. He said and hugged Yungi. Take care of yourself and thank you. I will, Yungi. He is my responsibility after all. He said with a smile, looking at Tyron and intertwining their hands. Acting like a married couple. Why should you not? So, get married. I know. Take care. He said while hugging Jungkook then hugged Tyron. And here, Yungi was totally confused why they are hugging when Jimmy is also going with them. 
feel of cat then completely when Thayan and Jungkook sat inside the car and while Jimin was standing beside him. Why didn't you sit in the car? He asked when Thayan shouted. Young, please take care of yourself and Jimin and shower him with your love and care. Bye! He said while giving his boxy smile. Then Jimin gave them a goodbye and they drove off. Yoongi was looking at Jimin when Jimin smiled and went inside. Yoongi followed him behind when he saw Jimin carry the suitcase and had it upstairs. Then Yoongi asked, You didn't go with them? Do you want me to leave? Uh, no, no, I mean, will you stay here in my house? I'm going in my room. He said and went upstairs. Yoongi went behind him when Jimin entered inside Yoongi's room. He headed towards Yoongi's wardrobe when Yoongi said, You said you were going to wear them? Then why you came here? Isn't it my room? He said and turned towards wardrobe and all of a sudden Yoongi shouted, Jimin, no, no, not this wardrobe. But before he could say it, Jimin opened the wardrobe when the things inside the wardrobe fell down. Jimin picked them up and saw, those were Jimin's solo album. He looked in front in the wardrobe and saw so many Jimmy plushes, Jimin's photographs and so many things. He smiled sweetly and looked at him who was awkwardly looking at him. He smiled nervously and said, uh, It's just, what's it, Mr. Mafia? He smiled and stepped towards Jimmy when for the very first time we found Jimmy too nervous. He was stepping back to the while. Jimin was stepping towards him until his back was door. It, it was just, I don't know, you are just not good for me. He said while resting his one hand on the wall behind Yungi. Jimin went more closer to Yungi's face and looked deeply in his eyes. He softly held Yungi's neck with his both hands and pulled him into a deep kiss. They both passionately kissed each other and smiled wildly while pulling out. It's almost night and Jimin came out of restroom and saw Yungi was doing some work on his laptop. Jimin went towards the dressing table and started trying to film. He looked at Yungi through the mirror, who was totally focused on his work. An idea popped in his mind. He smiled and went towards the wardrobe. He opened Yungi's wardrobe and pulled out a t-shirt and a boxer. He ordered an again stand in front of the mirror. While drying his hair, he called Yungi. Yungi Young? Yes, his words stuck in his mouth when he looked at Jimmy. He choked on the air when he saw Jimmy is wearing his oversized t shirt. The boxer is slightly visible, exposing his healthy legs. What the fuck is there? Did he just wear full clothes? Ah, uh, my heart is getting crazy. Does he know what he is wearing? Yungi was lost in his thoughts when he heard Jimmy shouting. Young! Huh? Oh, what, what happened? I'm calling you for a long time. Are you even listening? What? What did you ask? I was asking where is the body lost now? My legs seem crying. He bowed quickly when Yungi looked away and said, In the second round. Then Jimin picked up the lotion and sat on the bed beside Yungi. Yungi was trying not to look at Jimin, but his eyes were finding their way to look at Jimin. Jimin was smirking internally, meanwhile Yungi was trying his best not to look at him. Jimin, can you, um, wear something else? I mean, why did you wear my clothes? They? Are they looking bad? Can I not wear your clothes? Uh, no, no, it's not like that. Um, you stay, I need to make a phone call. He was about to stand when Yungi instantly sat on his lap and put his hand on Yungi's shoulder. Is that call more important than me? He said with a seducive voice while touching Yungi's Adam Chapman. Yungi held Jimmy's hand and said in his deep voice, Do you know what are you doing? Sitting on your lap? He said cutely but grabbed all of a sudden when Yungi pulled Jimin more closer by his eyes. Did you wear this dress on purpose? He said while looking intensively in Jimin's eyes when Jimin leaned closer to his ear and whispered, What if I say? He said and by Jimin's ear no. 
Then he started giving bad kisses on Genghis' neck, making Genghis close his eyes. He threw his neck backwards from the headboard of the bed when Jimmy was busy making purple marks on his neck. Genghis' hands were roaming on Jimmy's thighs to his face. Jimmy stopped. Stop right here, you know. Before he could say further, Jimmy attacked on his lips. After a few minutes, the kiss became more intense when Yungi turned the table and hovered over the snow. Enough of your teasing. If you really want it, then let me do it. But don't complain me later. I want This is so I want you. Get ready to be me and Jimmy. He smiled and before attacking on Jimmy's lips, he kissed on his forehead. That night, they both bridged the gap in between them by marking each other. With their bodies, their souls were mingled with each other. That's how a mafia and an idol found a comfort, love, care, and passion for each other in their soul. After that, Yuri stopped working as a mafia, and Jimmy's love helped him to find his real talent. After that, Yuri started composing music, and within just few years, he became the most talented composer of the music industry. Yunmin and Tiger got married after two years of dating. Namjin too got blessed with twins, and Hobi and Vyan adopted a girl child, Swanjin, as Vyan wanted. So this is how the story ends. Or can we start with a beautiful note? You cannot forget what happened, but you can accept it and let it go by moving on forward to your dreams. Just don't let your past define your present. Thinking cannot change what happened. So better accept the fact and focus on your present like you and do. They forgot their past and moved on together in a beautiful life, holding their hands with a smile. So, do the same.